My name is Andrew Baines. I am the founder of noexperiencejob.io and the host of the Custom Journeys podcast. Now let's get into these tips. Hey, wait, like this video, share it with somebody. All right, now let's get into the tips. Would you like to make $11,000 a month? Like, I'm just curious. All right, so look, Microsoft has this Microsoft Leap program. It's a great opportunity for entry-level software engineers who are looking to get into tech. And this is perfectly or specifically made for those of you who are coming from either a coding bootcamp or that are self-taught programmers. I have the link in the description below. Make sure you click it. Make sure you actually read the full description of the job thoroughly. There are a few different things in there that they require you to have in order to actually be qualified for this opportunity. In particular, this cohort for the Microsoft Leap program is from January of 2025 until May 2025. You must be able to attend and participate throughout the entirety of the cohort to even be eligible for the program. This is all sounds good, right? 11 grand a month, amazing. I would love to make that if I was just starting off as a software engineer, but this program will be very, very, very competitive. So here are three tips that I've learned from interviewing people that actually got into tech apprenticeship programs that I recommend that you consider or implement if you wanna increase your chances of actually landing a job or landing this job in particular. So make sure, before we get into that, make sure you actually like this video, subscribe to the channel, share this with a friend, all that good stuff, and make sure you act fast. This program opened on August 22nd, recording this today, August 26th, and it closed on August 29th. So make sure you act quickly. You have like two days left probably from the time this is being posted, so move quickly. So tip number one, make sure you present your skills in the best light possible. The recruiters for this program will be actually reviewing not only your resume, but also your LinkedIn profile. So you need to make sure that both of those are up to date and that you're presenting your skills in the best light possible. I get it, if you don't have any experience, you just came from a coding bootcamp, or if you're self-taught, you don't have any actual real world work experience that's directly one-to-one -one relevant with the software engineering role. However, you need to be able to craft your resume and craft your LinkedIn profile to demonstrate the skills that you've gained. You wanna demonstrate your technical skills, meaning, okay, hey, what coding languages do you know how to code in? But not only that, you also wanna demonstrate your ability to collaborate with others, and then also problem solve and critical think. Although you may have learned one language in the coding bootcamp or when you were going the self-taught route, Microsoft may have you learn a completely different skill set or coding language. So it's important for you to be able to demonstrate that, hey, regardless of what language it is or what problem you're faced with, you're able to digest and problem solve quickly on your feet. Also, I know some of y'all don't like working in teams or maybe aren't familiar with working in teams in a corporate environment, but it's highly important. You're not gonna be working in a vacuum exclusively by yourself. You're gonna be collaborating with team members, whether it's other software engineers or project managers, product managers, whatever. So it's important that you demonstrate those skill sets in your resume and in your LinkedIn profile. All right, tip number two, demonstrate your willingness to learn. So kind of hit on this a little bit with tip number one, but this needs its own separate tip or point of emphasis. The reason I say this is because there's gonna be hundreds, if not thousands of people applying to this program and other tech apprenticeship programs out there. Whoever is making the selection to determine who is gonna be getting accepted into these programs, they wanna pick people that they feel confident that these people are gonna persevere regardless of what challenges they're faced with and that they're gonna be willing to put the time and effort in to learn these new skill sets and be successful in this role. You're gonna be learning a lot of information in a short amount of time, so it's gonna be important for you to demonstrate to the recruiters and the managers, especially if you don't have a ton of experience already, that hey, you're willing to learn quickly, you can learn quickly, and these are the different ways that you've done it. If you've been in a coding bootcamp, you probably can demonstrate this easier than others because a lot of times coding bootcamps are really compressed a lot of information and within like a 13 to 15 week time frame. So you want to kind of portray and demonstrate, okay, hey, these are the things that I learned in that environment. This is how I was able to succeed before having to learn a lot of information in a short time period. And this is what I can do to kind of give you that sense of security and confidence that I'm going to be successful in this role. This is also a tip that really relates to Austin Jones's story. He is a tech apprentice that got into the Niantic tech apprenticeship program. I'll leave the link to his video below. This is something that he kind of felt like helped him be successful and land his tech apprenticeship program. So I encourage you guys, you know, kind of watch his video, learn some different things from that conversation and see how you can apply those lessons learned to your own lived experience. All right, last tip, tip number three, connect on a personal level. So step one is obviously applying to the job, but assuming that you're starting to move through the interview process, I know 
you're thinking about Microsoft. It's this great big company, at some point most valuable company in the world. You really want to work there. You really want to land this job. But at the end of the day, it can be an intimidating process. I'm not going to lie. But at the end of the day, you have to remember on the other side of that table, on the other side of that Zoom interview or Teams interview is another person just like you. That person has their own interests, their own hobbies, their own doubts, their fears, their own struggles, their own likes and dislikes, all those things. That brand, Microsoft, is just made of a, a collection of people like you and me. How can you connect with that person that is the actual decision maker for this job opportunity and improve your chances of making them feel comfortable, making them believe in you as an individual? And I think part of that goes into you know connecting with them on a personal level. I had an interview with a guy named Austin Jones and he kind of really outlined this perfectly in our conversation. He said he was able to connect with the recruiter on a personal level and talk about their passion for learning and reading books while also, and then also their passion for working out and being healthy. Find a way to connect with that person you know, whether it's talking about the technical things that kind of come with the job or the technical challenges you may have faced throughout your learning process, or, you know, find a way to connect with them on a personal level, whether it's, you know, maybe you both have kids or you both have hobbies, or maybe y'all went to the same college or whatever the case may be. Figure out what it is that you can find that's in common with that person across the table and try to connect with them on a personal level. I think that can do a lot of wonders for kind of getting you to go on to the next round of interviews and connecting with them on a, on a personal level. Even if you don't land a job, you know, it still just kind of helps to kind of build that network and have that recruiter and that connection that you can, you know, build that relationship with over time and kind of see how things go. So that's it. Those are three quick tips. I hope they were quick. I felt like I was talking for a long time. Again, if you haven't already, make sure you like this video, share it with somebody. Um, I am going to be posting more of these videos moving forward. That's it for this video. Peace. See you all soon.